Let's stay with that story because humans can understand gestures used by chimpanzees to communicate with each other in the wild. That's according to new research. Scientists from the University of St Andrews asked volunteers to watch videos and translate the animal's sign language. Well, the results indicate that this form of communication may be the origin of our own language. Here's our science correspondent, Victoria Gill. A silent demand for food from one bonobo to another. And a big scratch, that's chimpanzee language for groom me. There are now dozens of known gestures in the great ape lexicon, each with a particular meaning. By showing videos of these gestures to volunteers, scientists discovered that more than half the time people are able to understand the message that a wild chimp or bonobo is trying to convey with a signal or a movement. We can be fairly confident that this would have been a communicate, this is a communication system shared by all great ape species, including humans, and that our last common ancestors with bonobos and chimpanzees probably used quite similar gestures. And that these gestures may have then gone on to scaffold the evolution of human gesture and human language as we know it now. Some gestures are easier for us to understand than others. Shaking an object like this is apparently flirtation. But people's ability to understand the messages that our closest primate cousins are trying to convey has provided the researchers with a clear scientific message about how our own language might have evolved. Victoria Gill, BBC News. Well, you saw one of the study's researchers, Dr Kirsty Graham, in Victoria's report. And now I'm delighted to say she joins us live to tell us more about the study. Very good to have you with us. Tell us a little bit more about exactly what it is that you found. Um, so normally I work with bonobos in the wild, um, spend a lot of time following them around the forest and filming them. Um, and then I come back and I take that video and I analyse it and I try to unpick what these gestures mean. We flipped this and got people who have no experience looking at bonobos or chimpanzees and asked them whether they can understand the meanings of these gestures without any information before or after. Um, and people are really good at it. Um, if people were guessing at chance, we'd expect about 25%, but people are over 50% um, successful at assigning meanings to these gestures. So overall, we found a really good understanding for non-human great ape gesture. How surprised were you? Um, you know, we were we were and we weren't surprised. Uh, we sort of expected because these are rich sets of gestures that are shared across uh, gorillas, orangutans, bonobos, chimpanzees. We kind of suspected that humans might also have some sort of understanding of them. We know that human infants, uh, one to two years old, use uh, quite a few of these gestures. Um, but it was surprising given how little information the people got. They really just saw the gesture action itself, nothing that happened before, nothing after, and that was enough for people to understand what the gestures meant. I don't want to be a damp squib, but if it was about 50%, that does mean half of people didn't recognise the gestures, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I think what's important here is that we know that context is really important for our own communication. It's also really important for other great apes. So bonobos, some of their gestures have multiple meanings. So an arm raised gesture might mean climb on my back. It might mean groom me. Um, it might mean uh, move closer. So there's gestures that have many meanings, but they mean specific things in specific contexts. So one of our follow up questions is whether given more context Text, knowing what happens before if people become better at interpreting these gestures. Understood. What does it tell us about the origins, do you think, of human gestures? Um, it gives us more confidence that this is a gestural communication system that uh, our last common ancestor probably would have used. Um, and so this is kind of a starting point if we're thinking about how human gesture and human language evolved. We know that we're starting with this set of gestures or this gesture ability that's shared with living great apes. Yeah, we're looking at some pictures as you're talking, Kirsty, and, and the stroking of the mouth, for example, means give me the food. And then tearing strips from a leaf with teeth is a sign of flirtation. I'm just wondering how, how that works in the, human, in the human world instead of the uh, chimpanzee and bonobo world. 
Yeah, that's an interesting one. So they take sort of leaves like this and we'll just tear them off. And there is some uh, community differences. So there's a nice uh, new bit of research by Gal Badihi and colleagues um, that there's some community differences in how the chimps are doing these. And bonobos will pick off leaves and drop them. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure whether to recommend that people try picking leaves and, and clipping them with their teeth. Um, probably only if you know what the plant is. Um, but yeah, that was not one of the gestures that we tested. But as you said, the mouth stroke gesture, this was one that was really well understood. Um, they also do a big loud scratch that's like a loud exaggerated scratching movement. People were really good at understanding that that was a request to be groomed, like come and pick these bugs and bits of fur off of me. Hmm. How common is it for animals to, to gesture to one another? Um, there's more and more evidence that it's common across other primates. So there's some nice research on baboons um, and on bonnet macaques and other macaque species showing sets of around 30 to 40 gestures, um, about half of what we found in great apes, but maybe they'll find more. There's also um, some evidence of gesture in birds. Um, so in corvids and in babblers that they do some displays um, and some gestures actually with their um, wings and beaks. Um, so I think it, it might be quite widespread that across the animal kingdom, there is some ability to use these body actions as ways of communicating, but nothing quite as rich as what we see in other great apes so far. Yeah, that's interesting, because I suspect there may be people watching this who think, well, I'm sure my dog or cat gestures. I mean, is that possible? Yeah, and that's a question we get a lot. Um, I had someone ask, well, my dog understands my gestures. Does that mean I'm closely related to my dog? No, oh. <laughs> quite distantly related. But it does tell us something probably about how dogs and cats were domesticated because they've gone through um, a selection process where we've chosen traits. We've chosen to continue breeding dogs that are attentive to our commands, to our gestures. So dogs, for instance, quite good at following pointing and understanding pointing and using some pointing themselves, um, where that's really uncommon across other species. So studying dogs um, and maybe other domesticated species can also inform us on human gesture. Hmm. I mean, it's fascinating and it's great to talk to you about it. I suppose I wonder what further application, what further use this research could have in the future. Um, I think there's probably uh, welfare applications. So when we're considering um, a lot of great, well, all great ape species are endangered. There's a lot of them in captivity and captive breeding programs can be really important conservation tools. Um, but equipping people with uh, more knowledge about uh, recognizing what the chimps and other great apes are communicating about could have important welfare uh, implications for the apes as well. Dr Kirsty Graham from the University of St Andrews, we have to leave it there. Really good to talk to you and thanks for explaining it to us. Thank you.